Hello and welcome back to another show. I'm Sid and in today's video I'm going to be showing you this simple tap to change filter effect which you can use to alternate between the background and foreground layers. I'm using red, green and blue colours as the example because I already have made this filter and it's live on my Instagram account. You can find it by searching my name or by looking up primary RGB under the filters tab. You'll be able to find it and I don't know, try it out for yourself. Otherwise, let's get straight into it. I'll show you how to make your own. I'm also going to show you how to add some instructions on the screen so that when you hit refresh or when the user opens the filter for the first time, they know how to interact with it. Whether you want to tap to change or head nod or blink your eyes, whatever it is, they all pretty much work the same. I'm using a screen tap here, but you can just replace that with whatever gesture you want to uh, use for your filter. Yeah, so that's pretty much what we'll be getting up to. Let's pause this, create a new scene, and we'll get started. I'll switch back over to this camera so you don't feel lonely without me for too long. Uh, and then we're going to add our first object, which will be a rectangle nested inside of this canvas. I'm going to duplicate that three, four, five, six, seven times. So now I have seven of these rectangles. I'm going to rename this one foreground none, which is our neutral layer. And then after that, I'm going to have foreground red, foreground green, foreground blue. We don't need a background none, so we'll just jump straight to background red, background green, background blue, that's annoying. Cool, so now we've got those, we'll control select all of them and we'll adjust the size, so we'll make them fill the width and the height of the screen. So now you can see me behind if I look over the side, but like this is completely uh, blocking me out right now, which is good, it's what we want. Next we're going to come up to layers and we're going to rename this layer the default one foreground and we're going to add another one which we're going to name background then we'll come back over to our scene we'll select our three background uh, rectangles and we'll change the layer property so that it, they are actually on the background layer so now we've got foreground for foreground and background for background lovely right next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our material layers so we'll add one here and we'll duplicate that Seven. Uh -huh. And now we'll just copy and paste the names because I'm lazy. Now we've actually got to change the colors. So we've got our red ones, which will change over to red, our green ones, which will change over to green. And I'm pretty sure you can guess where I'm going. That's right, pink. Now, control select all of them, switch the shader type to flat so you get a completely neutral color palette. And uh, now we're going to have to connect them up to our materials because I was lazy and I duplicated them. So now we have to manually go through and just add them all in. So, foregrounds and then backgrounds. And see as I do it, they start to appear on the screen as visible. Until I eventually get to this last one. <laughs> Lovely. So next, other than the foreground, which we're going to ignore, we're going to highlight and control select all of these and we'll reduce the opacity on them to about 50. Cool, you still can't see me, but we're getting close. Next you want to come up here to camera, which is like almost the almost the top nested thing under device. And on this side you're going to click the plus button here for segmentation and for texture extraction that will add these two textures down here in our assets panel next we're going to come up to our foreground layers we're going to control select all four of them and we're going to under textures we're going to add our camera texture hi i'm back again you can see me now then we're going to check this alpha box and we're going to add our person segmentation mask in there so now all of these have that uh, and it's pretty sick lovely so now what we've got is all of our layers sitting on the foreground and background. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> so now what we've got is all of our layers sitting on the foreground and background. They're separated into layers, but they're still sort of sitting on top of each other. So now we're going to open our patch editor and we're going to start making them uh, separate so that some are visible and some are not. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using a screen tap, but any gesture that you can add in Instagram or Facebook will work with this filter. You just have to switch it out, say for eye blink or head, head nod or whatever it is. We're going to connect that up to a counter, which in this case will iterate up to seven uh, because that's how many rectangles we have. 
and we're going to connect that to an equals exactly function which I'm going to duplicate for each of our rectangles so we have three, four, five, six, seven of those now I'll leave this first one at zero and I'm going to renumber all of these in the sequence one, two, three, four, five and six lovely so that's our little that's our little setup there next I'm going to take all of these except for this back this uh, foreground with another layer and I'm going to make them all visible inside of the patch editor by coming up to the properties and where this checkbox is for visibility you want to hit this little orange arrow instead that will bring them into the patch editor as patches and you can move them where you want them to be so depending on which order you want the tap to change to appear you just move them around. In this case I want it to alternate between the background and the foreground. So I'm going to start with the red, connect that one up, and then the red background, and then the green foreground, and the green background, and it just keeps going. You can add more colors, you can add like different images if you want different background images, it doesn't have to be colors. Like, But yeah, pretty much this is how it works. Then we can simulate touch, and if I tap on the screen you'll see I turn red when I tap, and then the background turns red and if I zoom out a little bit you'll see the actual functions happening so right now we're on count number two of seven I tap the button we go to three three is foreground green and then background and then foreground and background and once we hit zero because there's nothing there we just go back to this sort of neutral plate yeah that's pretty much the entire effect you could tap through you can add more colors like I say you could change the background to different things like for example this here doesn't have to be a background uh, that's red you could just switch it out for an image and then the image will be the background where the red is I've set it at 50% opacity mostly so that you can see through it like at the things that are in the background but you can just have it be completely solid that's up to you as well but yeah that's pretty much the whole effect next thing I'm going to do very quickly is show you how to add some instructions so if we come up here to device uh, under custom instructions we'll create instructions on opening that adds these three patches into our patch editor which always fall right in the middle of whatever you're doing so you're going to have to drag them out of the way we have our runtime here which the screen is paused right now when I hit play the runtime is from the moment the filter is opened so whether it's me testing it here or the user on their device uh, once you once they open a the filter this, this patch begins to run then we have our less than which is a count similar to equals exactly but rather than checking whether two numbers are the same this one checks whether the current number is lower than is less than the uh, the count number that we've set in this case five seconds as long as it's less than five seconds the instructions that we've set to appear on screen they will appear and then once the count reaches five seconds and goes beyond it those instructions will disappear uh, but we need to add a token to make that happen so next we'll come up to properties edit properties capabilities instructions custom instructions and then plus you get this big old list of stuff that you can add so we have like tap to place change your voice whatever instructions you want to give we're going to be using tap to change right now because it's the simple one that I'm using for this tutorial and we'll copy that and we'll paste that token in here under the instructions you can see the time has already started uh, and the checkbox isn't enabled and the instructions aren't there that's because this has gone above five seconds but if I hit refresh now you see it there on the screen, the count's begun again. This is checked, and once it hits five, both of those disappear. But you can still tap to change. The sun is right in my eyes right now. <laughs> the sun is right in my eyes. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you in this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I tried to remember everything, but like reciting these instructions back is probably the hardest part of all of this. Like I have fun making the stuff, making the filters, uploading the videos actually sitting here and practicing to the point where I can more or less recite from memory how to do this while actually doing it that's 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 a little bit of a learning curve there but that's why I'm making so many videos or at least part of the reason so that I can get better at it anyway if you enjoyed this if it was helpful at all leave a like leave a comment don't forget to subscribe because I just hit 34 subs and I guess 40 or 50 is the next goal which is crazy to think about I only started this channel like a few weeks ago and I'm already growing quite fast so I'm grateful and happy about that uh, yeah I keep saying I'm gonna try and make more videos which is true I'm always trying to make more stuff I have a bunch of ideas and things that I want to do 
but it just really depends on how much time I have during the day. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Peace.